Good afternoon. We're back with you at the University of Dayton Arena on the campus of the University of Dayton Division Three State Semifinal Action Wrapping Up Ottawa Glendorf and Afrocentric in a classic. Welcome in to uh, the high above our position here, Patrick Hamler, along with Mark Stein. It was, it was, it was a rematch game. It was a chip on your shoulder game. It was however you wanted to define it. It was a great game between OG and Afrocentric. To, to throw out all those initial adjectives, it was a tremendous high school basketball team with two teams that had great talent and great will to win. OG just found a way in double overtime. Uh, two solid teams, two uh, terrific players, obviously, on both sides. Colin White, of course, representing Ottawa Glandorf, Theo Mag, also great for the Titans. Over on their side, uh, Dalen Swain for Columbus Afrocentric had a great game against OG last year. Uh, he was going to need to have a big effort for them to have a chance against the Titans this year. Well, what well. they did was they started with Erford on him, who played him pretty well in the first half. Then they put Colin White on him for a while. Then they went back to Erford. White finished up on him. They kept running different guys at him. So let's not waste any more time. We'll get right Right to the highlights of this one brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor and we get going and it was going to be Colin White who was going to need to step up. Struggled a little bit though early. A lot of hard work in the paint for both these teams. Hunter Stack Schulte's shot doesn't go but Theo Mag right in there he's able to get it done. You cannot discount, discount the 14 points and 11 boards he had today. He was outstanding inside. Here's Mag once again. Again, having to work really hard. Gets the offensive rebound. A lot of opportunities for second chances early going for OG. Mag gets it done there. Then Caden Erford to the rack. Gets this one to rattle home. Erford, two of the, his, one of his two buckets on the night. He struggled today. The defense was so good on him, so quick and athletic. He struggled today, but came through there. That's a high percent shot. How about Colin White with the slam right there toward the end of the first half. Getting the crowd. Great crowd support tonight, by the way, oh. for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. And then here's White. Getting the ball outside, three ball is good. White having some scoring difficulties early in this one, but he knocks that three. And then right before you get the crowd fired up and then just before halftime, White, oh, sorry, this is Mag also doing work yep. in inside. And then nice pass here coming up by Caden Erfer. Check this out, Erfer gets the ball behind the back pass to White throwing it down. Great job tonight. Well, they were overplayed on the wing. Great time to run a backdoor cut. So we head to the second half. Those are the first points for quite a while before that one. White hits the jumper. Afrocentric up by eight at this point. And then we're going to see Colin White on the defensive end. Huge block from behind there. Had to pick it up on both sides. Yeah, chase him down and deny a scoring opportunity inside. Here's a huge play. White pulling up. Beating the buzzer, making it 34 to 28 at the end of the third. You felt the momentum just going Absolutely. OG's way. They then scored. That was the one possession. The next four possessions plus that one, they scored 12 points. A great run of, of 12 points and five possessions to get back in the game. And that attack there, that's Mag scoring down low, bringing the Titans to within four. Then it's going to be White driving again, getting fouled and the, getting the harm, making this one a one-point game. Credit to the officials, they left both teams really well, play. It was a very physical basketball game. Kate Nerfer took one to the goal late. We thought should have got contact that didn't get it, but it was a very physical game at points. White gives the OG Titans the lead here. And then the drive and the score, making it 37-35 OG with five minutes to go. And then later on, it's Mag getting the bucket, 39-38 OG with two minutes to go. But this one going to overtime. And Hunter stuck Schulte. Hey, there's he a, a little bit. He, got he had a tremendous basketball game today. Played over 38 minutes. Only turned the ball over three times against great pressure. Overtime. So we go to a second overtime. Colin White hits what would be the game-winning shot here. Dalen Swain with an opportunity. Four seconds left. Gets a great look at it. You see that step back mark. Just too late. Makes the bucket. Doesn't count. It goes to video review. They say no. Oh, gee. The, the, they okay. ran They ran two guys at him and made him take that one backward dribble so he couldn't take the ball to the goal as quickly as he wanted to. A great defensive stand right there, and obviously the shot came late. OG with a 48-47 win and double overtime. White and Mag pacing the attack, 24 and 14 points, respectively, for the Titans. And Levi Underbrink comes through with a huge play today. He's got a, a big basket. He's got five rebounds. He's got a steal. Great help for him off the bench today. Um, just a great high school basketball game, and uh, you know the Ottawa Glendale Vapor Centric uh, battle has really kind of in the postseason. I mean, I remember I think it was like 08 it was a regional game, and, and then over the last about five years, uh, we would have really uh, went at each other. And uh, it's a it's just a great high school basketball game. You know, I got a lot of respect for Coach Bates and the way they do things. Uh, the kids are tough. They're physical. Um, and, and it just seems like the last couple of years, the implications of this game have been as high as you can get. And, uh, 
I, I thought it was a great high school basketball game. I thought both sides made plays. I thought both sides tried to give it away. Um, is but uh, I think it speaks volumes for the toughness of our kids. We preach all the time, you know, just that it means more. And, and I think our kids are built a little bit different because I think high school basketball and the opportunity to play in the state tournament is something that these guys talk about from the time they can walk. And uh, you know, their, their dads have played in this program, um, their brothers, you know, and, and it goes on. And you know, we just talk all the time about doing everything within your power to give yourself an opportunity. And, and these two young men right next to me um, laid it all on the line along with everybody else. And you know, I talked to our guys in the locker room afterwards, you know, our rotation went a little bit short there. Um, but we had 13 guys that made a huge impact because our preparation this week was phenomenal. It was just as on point as it could be. And uh, that's a testament to, to everybody. So just very, very proud. Um, what did you do defensively midway through the I think in the third quarter, you know, they, they kind of smacked us in the mouth there. We, you know, they started off on, they went on a five-over run there. Um, we were kind of out of sync on the offensive end. Um, and, and then Swain is, you know, he showed why he's the top 50, 75 player in the country. Um, but I think the key was we ended up starting, we started to send the second guy in. And, and that might not have affected him so much, but I think it got in the head of some of their supporting cast. And, and they were a little hesitant. The ball kind of stuck in their hands a little bit. Uh, we were able to get a couple turnovers off of that. And then we had a huge Huge little momentum swing there at the end of the third quarter. We hit a shot. Colin hit that three uh, at, at the buzzer, and then we had the ball coming back out. And uh, you know we have to capitalize when we play teams that are you know more athletic than us. And uh, you know you got a player like Dylan Swain. Uh, we got to be able to maximize opportunities, and, and we were able to do that. I felt pretty darn confident um, that that it was that it that it went a little late, um, but. You know, we, we've been on the other end of those before. You know, last year at, uh, in, in the state final, you know, the ball went out of bounds and, you know, it was almost over. And uh, they ended up putting a little bit of time on there. Um, it, it's a, we, won, we say play to the final whistle. We were really waiting to see the, the hand signal. You mentioned that coach uh, last year, two in a row now. Uh, what was that? Uh, I mean, you know, you that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, like I said, you never want to say it's a state tournament. Uh, you know that's that's your. You know you have to make it to the state tournament. They're, these kids put so much time, and I'm just proud of how hard they play. But in the back of their minds, I think uh, in their minds, it probably was a state tournament or bust type of year. And uh, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. We scheduled a really tough schedule to prepare us for Afro Central and to prepare us for the harvest preps and the Luther knees because um, that's not typically the, the style that we see within our league. So we, you know, we, we really bump that schedule up to get these guys as comfortable and as familiar with that type of physicality and speed. So, um, you know, it, it really paid off for us. How you stepped up? Two free throws there at the end. After you missed the first one, you step back. What was what was the thought process there when you step up to the Just just to breathe, you know, it's a big moment. It's double OT. We've had a couple double OT games this year, but just to breathe and relax my nerves and, and knock down a shot. I hit a, a million free throws in my life. I didn't miss just a million. Yeah, we really stepped up in the third quarter and started loving a few points. Um, I was just finding the ball and scoring. Teammates did a great job passing the ball in the post. And I, was, and I was just doing what I do and score. You talk about going back to the third quarter after that, running you down, telling you, just coach calls time out. What is your mindset for you? Um, mindset is just play as hard as we can. And that's about it, just play as hard as you can to win games. Just, just a fight, you know. We're, we, we fight. We're, we're guys that aren't going to go down without a fight. So just to fight back and, and find the rhythm on the offensive end and get stops and rebounds, that was that was a big thing. Um, what did you guys see in their the other chance they had to win the game? Did they only take the really long three? Did it seem like something just didn't work for them, or did it seem like they were second? 
I thought they set up a little bit, but I also thought we were we were heavy gaps. So it, to him, it probably didn't look like there was much open, and he, he had to take a long contested three, and, and that's the shot we wanted him to take. We didn't want him to get in the paint with those go through gadget arms and finish away. In his last attempt there, I mean, it's a transition thing. He's going to really go hard. I mean, what was the feeling coming up before you see him? Just trying to fly a couple guys at him, you know. He he did a girl step, and I swear he, he went from the three point line into the paint with one step. So, you know, just trying to stay in front of him and, and force him to, to take a contested jumper, which we didn't. But luckily, the time right now. How did you expect him to take a jumper? Well, I tip your caps and Coach Bates he ran a great set. You know, we were we really did everything within our power to. Um, to make it tough for him to get the ball. Um, he bring that guy across screen and, and just clipped enough of Colin and uh, to, to get him on the go. And uh, that's that's a that's a really talented guy going, you know, full head of steam. And uh, our goal is to make him shoot a jump shot and preferably, you know, somebody else. Um, but you know, like I said, he's, he's a pretty talented kid. Hey coach, I know in the, in the preseason me and you spoke about Theo's development from last year to this year. Uh, just kind of talk about his impact on the game tonight. I mean, 14 points, 11 rebounds, four four blocks is about as engaged as I think I've ever seen him play. I thought he was the X factor today. 100%. And, and Dio has been our X factor. Him and Caden do so many of those little things. And, and both of those guys are able to impact the game in different ways without scoring. Uh, Theo today was that presence in the paint that we desperately needed. You know, they put so much pressure on Colin out on the perimeter. Uh, they were really doing a good job of taking some things away from Caden. He didn't get any really uh, good looks tonight. Um, so Theo took advantage of that. And uh, the difference, and I'll be 100% honest with you, two years ago, Theo doesn't play in this game today. You know, he has plantar fasciitis. He practiced like what he practiced one day this week. Uh, it's been bothering for the last. It, it's been bothering him for the last, you know, month of the season. And from a mental standpoint, I don't think he would have went. I, I just, I don't think he would have. He's got so much tougher. He's taking that initiative that, you know, this game is. He's going to play the next level, and he's going to get that college. Hopefully, coach out there. He should get that college taken care of. And uh, he, he's put the time in, and, and I'm just so proud of that because, you know, when I took the job a long time ago, they, they just said, I, I told them, I want to turn turn these men, these boys into men, into win championships. And, and I think that development of Theo, just how much tougher and stronger and, and confident he's become is a testament and to show it on this stage tonight. I'm a proud coach, man. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle. Coach, can you tell us a little bit about Dave Westbrook? And whether he's ever been in a situation like he was at the line with two shots like that and, and scored by an overtime. Unbrick. Levi. 12. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Levi. Uh, Levi's just one of those guys. He's the unsung hero for us because he comes in and he's that effort guy. And he typically guards the other team's the top guard. Uh, he's just active. He plays his heart out. Um, he's not going to allow anybody with his athleticism, you know, when you're talking about those types of athletes that were there. But he's got his hand on multiple uh, balls there. He got a couple of deflections, really disrupted their flow there. And uh, whether he got the steal or, you know, he uh, was able to get fouled there, you know, yeah, he, he, he didn't, those didn't fall this time. But I got faith that that, that kid's going to come in and step up and make plays because, you know, that's what he's, that's what he does. Colin, oftentimes you and Dave were guarding each other. Um, you've now had two really big games against each other. Um, is there something about playing someone of that level that brings out the competitor to you and up to your game? And I don't know if you know him really well, but is there a mutual appreciation and respect for each other? Just kind of talk about, you know, just your game with him today. I mean, we, we go at it. I mean, last year we had, a, we had a good duel last year and this year, but there's just so much respect respect between us and uh, I think we, we elevate each other's games. He's a competitor and I'm a competitor and we really go at it and uh, at the end of the game we said it made all love and I wish him luck at, at Xavier and, and I know he's going to do great things over there so yes there's a, a ton of mutual respect between you. On top of that when you're having to exert too much effort on the defense then how does it affect your offense game? I try not to let it affect me, but but sometimes it does, and that's where my, my teammates come in and, and they make plays for for the whole team, and then you know I try to make as many plays as I possibly can. Coach, if someone would have said to you last night, you guys would go two of thirteen on three pointers. That probably would lose a little bit of sleep. 
I didn't sleep much this week. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that's what we do. We try to spread the teams out um, and, and try to get that penetration. We've got the dump down of the field. Not, you know, we, we shoot a lot of threes, and uh, that's that's kind of our game. Uh, we didn't shoot it real well, but a lot of that had to do with that percentage and their length and their ability to speed us up. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, our guys want to come back tomorrow, and, you know, whoever we play, that game plan's not going to change. You know, where those guys, that they put the time in, and you know, they all think they got the green light. Like, a six is two or number two. Head into their game tomorrow, which we'll have highlights and reaction to that right here on WOSN. Four, a high school basketball game is 32 minutes. Four of their players, their five starters, played 38 plus minutes today. Yeah, that's going to be a real struggle. The good thing is, of course, they played the 1045 game today, so they got plenty of time to decompress this afternoon. You play that 830 game and you go back to your motel room and you're still all jacked up and all wired up from the game. Tough to wind down. They've got some time to decompress this afternoon, watch a little bit of the next game, and then prepare for tomorrow. And you also saw Ottawa Glandorf able to get some contributions from other guys throughout. You know, they had some guys who struggled. Colin White, of course, had a terrific game. Theo Meg had a terrific game, but they had other guys who had to step up. They didn't stuff the stat sheet. They were able to go in there and make things happen. Levi Underbrick will be one of those. We mentioned him a little bit a while ago. His defense was outstanding. He's got five rebounds, a huge basket in that mix, and a steal. He really played well today and helped his team out. Yeah, so I need some more highlights of the contest. And, of course, Ottawa Glandorf gets to continue as they will be playing in the Division Three state championship game coming up tomorrow starting at 5.15. They'll take on the winner of the teams that are warming up behind us right now, Harvest Prep or Lutheran East. And, you know, I, I don't think anyone in the press conference asked Tyson McLaughlin who he preferred because I think at this point you probably don't have a preference. Everybody's good at this point. They're going to stay here, watch the game, and see what they can find out. Well, they've charted both teams before they got here this weekend in preparation for that. Now their players will watch a little bit, decompress a little bit. Coaching staff will do a little bit more in-depth stuff with them. Probably have a team meeting tonight, get together tomorrow morning for a shoot around and put some stuff together and back on the floor tomorrow night. So we'll be here tomorrow with highlights and reaction from that contest. Mark and I, along with Danny Holbrook, will be here to break that down. We'll also have the Division Four state championship highlights and analysis and reaction from that as Crestview goes for their first state title since 2019 against Richmond Heights. Richmond Heights having to survive to a certain extent against Rushi. We'll see how that plays out as they take on Crestview tomorrow. Yeah, Rushi can push them to the wall. They were up 37-35 in the late third quarter, and they made them work really hard. So congratulations to Rushi, but they will play Lutheran Heights. So that's going to wrap up our coverage here for this Saturday night. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back on Sunday with Division 4, Division 3 state championship reactions. Thank you for watching here on WOSN. For Mark Schein, our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Kamler. Thank you to Ultimate Outdoor for sponsoring OG's highlights and press conference, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on WOSN.